This is modernized Winston for Node 4, which I like to think of as an exercise in open source streams, ES6, and keeping code alive. Uh, first of all, hi, I'm Charlie. Uh, you might know me from such places as the internet, uh, or the GitHub, or the Twitters. Uh, I am the director of UX platform at GoDaddy, and if you want to talk about that later, we can do that. Uh, but first, let me tell you a story. Actually, it's a story about open source. So about five years ago, uh, it started a company called Node Jitsu, which back then, Node sort of felt like the Wild West. But really, the modules that we needed were just not there at all. Uh, so when something's there, you have to write it yourself. Uh, if this was today, I probably wouldn't have written these things. But if you're thinking about writing something yourself, it really is like the best feeling that you can get. But back to our story. Uh, remember that this is 2010. Uh, actually, January 17th, 2011, which is before the first one of these, uh, NodeConf. So that means that there is no streams API. ES5 is still very new. ES5 spec was finalized, I think, in 2009 or 10. Uh, very limited code coverage tools. So if you wanted to get good code coverage, it just was sort of non-existent. Uh, but it was still a pretty good API. Um, and it's reflective for sort of how it's stood up today. Um, we've got about 2.6 million downloads a month, and that's just of Winston. Um, to compare that with uh, anyone who uses Bunyan in the room, that's you know, about five times that amount. Uh, there's also about 700 packages in the ecosystem. So there is pretty much a transport for anything. Anything you want, there was probably two of them. Um, I wanted to compile download stats for this, but I just didn't have enough time. But needless to say, my back of the napkin estimate is it's probably about 1% of all NPM downloads relate to this ecosystem of things. Um, but it's not all rainbows and sunshine, for sure. There were definitely some, some dark times. Uh, about 18 months ago, my life kind of looked like this. Uh, there were over 200 issues. There was a lot of user negativity. Uh, and if you use open source at all yourself, the next thing I'm going to show you is pretty much the worst thing that you can say to someone. Like, just never use those words. It's like the meanest thing that you can do. It's like passive aggressive. It's just not helpful. Just don't do that. Because taking abuse from your users just totally sucks. Uh, you kind of feel like. The music's bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> right. Um, and trust me, I did, right? Like, it's, it's not easy. So just please, you know, be nice. Um, talk to people, like, cultivate human interaction. When in doubt, like, follow up personally. Like, I will always answer an email where someone's like, you're annoying and I hate you. But if you do it in public, that's just a totally different thing. It's like kind of just having basic human decency or class. But back to our story. Um, after, you know, careful thought and medi meditation and the IOJS release, I decided that, you know, yeah, we can, we can do this. Open source, it can be done. Uh, but, you know, my next question was, okay, how? How can I get back from this point? Um, and that's a good question because your immediate reaction might be to do this, right? Just work as hard as you can for as long as you can to, like, fix all the things and make everybody happy. But that is just absolutely not the first answer that you should be going for. Um, and that's not to say that you shouldn't have a long-term vision for whatever you're trying to do because you actually do have one. And the one that we had was streams, formats, don't break the ecosystem, and like upgrade to ES6 and ES2015. Um, but the first thing you actually have to do is just find anyone that will help and start weekly meetings. And we started doing that about 16 months ago. And now we're sort of at the point where the full rewrite's pretty much done. So, you know, yes, if you're interested in this sort of stuff at the end of my talk, I would love to talk to you about it. There are some awesome contributors that help make this possible. Uh, and the first thing that we did was just triage everything. Um, you need to know what all the issues are and then triage the pull requests. Uh, the easiest way to do this, I found, is to sort of act like an investigator, right? Like, 
what bucket does this fall into? Uh, is it the next minor version? Is it the next patch version? Or is it the next major version? And for Winston, there were a few things that we found when we went through the sort of plethora of issues. Um, one of them is that the logging levels at some point, some pull request, had reversed them. And so that was pretty annoying for most people, especially since it was the inverse of syslog levels. So if you were coming in from syslog and you, know, you thought that zero was the most important thing, it turned out that zero was the least important thing. And everyone hated that. And I don't know, how, I actually like Git blamed it and I still don't know who merged the pull request. So you know, I'm not gonna say it wasn't my fault, but um, uh, the other thing is, is this, and I picked this image uh, somewhat as a point. Who's familiar with the idea of the tragedy of the commons? Raise your hand. Okay, only about half the room. So it's actually um, an economics uh, term where if you have a bunch of, you know, back in the day, cows just used to graze around like this and there was this big common green and if everyone lets their cows graze on the green, then there'll be no more grass and everyone's cows will die. So it's sort of a uh, caveat emptor to actually doing things in an open way. And in Winston, there was one of these because we got all this support, we got all this popularity, but there was one function that just became this, this nightmare. Um, and anyone who's done any work with Winston is probably familiar with it because you'll see it used in places like this. Um, and the JSON literal is not the problem because most of these options still exist. They're just sort of redistributed throughout the code base. But every time someone would want a feature related to some new thing that they were doing with logging, for example, log stash is in there, or pretty printing, or adding timestamps, or a custom stringifier, or a custom formatter, or a custom depth for my custom stringifier, like, it would just end up here. And that, like, what I thought was like, oh, it's just a common utility, I'd written like four or five transports, wrote like a 30 or 40 line function over the course of four years, with all the pull requests and contributions coming in, just became absolute spaghetti. Um, but there was some merit to the idea of doing object-based message passing, which um, we are going to talk about later because this is, you know, where all the dragons are. So now we've figured out what our problems are and we can start landing pull requests. Um, absolutely do not refactor things yet because, you know, you might say I, I hate these things, I want to refactor them, but the key is patience because landing old PRs is really, really hard and it gets even harder as the code changes. And you might sort of get this attitude of like, oh, just you know, ask, them, ask them to resubmit. Um, developers rarely contribute. Like, again, just sort of that, going back to that, is this project abandoned? People would rather like plus one an issue of is this project abandoned than actually like going and reading the code and trying to fix it. Um, so you really only get one chance. Most people that I reach out to across all the projects they just go dark. They make their PR and they go back to their job and they pretend like GitHub doesn't exist. So I like to think of them like that. So <laughs> please, please don't be this person. Uh, again, just sort of appeal to human decency. Um, so the sort of the Zen takeaway here is that it is easier to merge and then refactor rather than refactor than merge. But it takes a lot of patience. Uh, so now that we've merged all our PRs and those sorts of things, we can actually get back to our focus on that you know, long-term project goal. And we did this in three steps. Uh, one of them, which is sort of, sort of a break, you know, breaking from the semantic versioning point of view, but not actually breaking in the way that anyone who used Winston heavily would understand. And that was Winston 1. Um, then there was Winston 2, which was a fair amount of bigger breaks, right? We reversed the syslog levels so that they conform to the RFC spec. Uh, we removed the daily rotate uh, file transport, which is the bane of my existence, uh, and then I refused, you know, it's easy, like here's a thing that should have been its own module from the beginning, great, now we don't maintain that, anyone who wants to be a maintainer, go for it, because that was one of those things that just created issues and nobody wanted to do the work. So great, bigger breaks. And then, you know, we finally get to, um, you know, really breaking to new APIs, like everything sort of breaks. We did actually maintain backwards compatibility, uh, but, we did break a lot of things. Um, and the key to that was, number one, stream all the things. So there was a lot of bookkeeping, if anyone's ever used Winston, around you know, adding transports and removing transports and then keeping track of those things, whether they track exceptions or not. Uh, it turns out that Pipe, the Pipe APIs in the Streams 2 and Streams 3 spec, does all of this bookkeeping for us. 
So now the logger is a transform stream that pipes to a format, more on that later, uh, and then whenever that format becomes readable, we write it to ourself, and we pipe ourselves to all of the transports. So bookkeeping is handled by node. Functions that were 20, 30 lines became one line. Uh, really quite a nice uh, refactor. Number two is Mocha all the tests. Um, so Mocha did not exist when we wrote Winston. Um, back then I was still maintaining, and I still technically do maintain, a library called Vows, which was the, for a long time, the like second most used testing library in Node, but like second in the way that, you know, Dvorak is second behind QWERTY. Um, and so the conclusion that I came to there was that it really doesn't matter whether what's better, what's worse, it's that you have to optimize for contribution. Most people in this room probably know how to write Mocha tests and they're not gonna wanna deal with vows, so that's how you optimize for contributions. And then lastly, sort of going back to that original idea of these sort of streams of objects, we can introduce these things uh, which we call formats in Winston 3. And you take something like this, which is the center of the file transport, and it becomes something like this. So this, and this wasn't even, oh, I guess I can't go back to a previous build. Um, so this wasn't even the full function. There's like a ton of stuff before this. And now it's just, it's literally two lines of things. Um, because all of that logic for building the actual string we want to write has been handled earlier up, higher up in the chain, which was just much, much easier. And so then we moved all of those user requested features into user land, right? So now you can define a format which is you know, the combination of other formats, which themselves are just transform streams. And defining those formats are extremely simple. Uh, to give you an example from the colorize format, uh, this info object is more or less the options, that big set of options that got passed to common.log, but now you have access to it and you can decide what you wanna do with all the things and eventually it will get written to a single string representation which is the sole responsibility of the transport to go put wherever, either in Elasticsearch or in uh, the console or in a file or wherever. We don't care. So at last I can say I feel pretty much like this. Uh, because now when I get all those pull requests I can say use your own formats. <laughs> like, not my problem. Uh, but you can fix it and do it pretty easily. Um, we also did some other pretty significant refactoring um, around shared functionality. Uh, so anyone who's ever written a transport, most of those transports actually depend on Winston. Um, we've ripped those out into their own uh, different sort of libraries, one for the actual functionality and the other for the abstract test suite. And lo and behold, after much work and much effort, we did actually manage to maintain backwards compatibility. Uh, because every transport still defines a log function, if it's not a proper stream, we can wrap that in a stream and then write to it in that same way. So those 700 packages will still work. Everyone will start to get sort of deprecation notices. If, they, if you upgrade to Winston 3 and you use a transport that's legacy, you'll get that deprecation notice. Then you can go bug that author to upgrade and slowly the ecosystem will come up. Um, people that just don't want to change and are happy with the legacy stuff, they can use Winston Compat, which has that old 100 line spaghetti code of common.log. It also has the older transport um, and has a bunch of older uh, vows t test macros for anyone who's writing their tests in vows for their Winston transport that was their own, which tended to be what most people did because they would just copy and paste the tests out of Winston into their own thing and then modify it slightly. So the last thing that sort of ties this off um, is something we just released today called Logmark, which is benchmarking for logging libraries because all of this stuff is all well and good, but like did we actually do anything? And the answer is yes. Um, it's 30% faster than Winston 2, and it's 50% faster than Bunyan. Um, in my mind, this is really a reflection on how we were able to leverage streams and the maturity of the streams API. Uh, we tried to move to streams 2 in 010 timeframe about two years ago, two and a half years ago, and it was just a nightmare. It was not stable, lots of problems. We ended up having to do a bunch of weird polyfill stuff. Um, don't have to do that anymore but we are targeting four and up. Um, we're also using ES6 features like maps and sets and those types of things which are only in node four, um, which is why we're targeting that side of things. Uh, and now I have about four and a half minutes for QA. Um, 
And I guess I'll end with um, a special thanks to all the contributors and a reminder that if this interests you, um, we would love more contributions. So there's a mic. Anyone has questions? We've got about four and a half minutes for questions. Sweet. That means I did my job good. Cool. Well, oh, yeah, come on up. Um, so yeah, so the thing about most of that, like if you talk about colors in particular or not? No, 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 no. Uh, my list of transport goes to standard I.O. because I'm in a Docker container and I can't see anything. I can't go read the logs or anything. So we have packed something. So Winston just basically splits out the console and we read the console out. Yeah, I mean, you could just write something to talk to, like if you're using the um, Kubernetes log facility, um, if you're using that with Docker, you can write to that. You can write to Elastic and tail that. Um, you can also just write to something for debugging purposes, like another HTTP server that's outside your container. Um, the real trick for most people, the bug that I actually fixed a couple weeks ago was um, colors in a non-TTY environment, which is Docker, and those weren't there. Um, so that's what I thought your question was a reference to. But yeah, you probably don't want to write to console at all in general, because process.stdout.write in node is blocking. Just period. Yeah, just that, that's just a fact. That was another like weird little breaking change we did in Winston is that Winston no longer has a default console transport anywhere. So you have to add those things yourself. And if you try to log with no transports, we'll start telling you like, hey, you don't have any transports, you should probably add something. Whereas before you could just require Winston log something and end up in your console. But that in production is a bad practice because again, process.stdout.write in node is blocking. So trying to sort of take off the sharp edges and sharp corners to things. Yeah, come on up. Is the mic actually on? Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's on. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, you, you spoke about optimizing for contributions when you talked about choosing Mocha over Vows. Are there any other things that you might want to point out for module developers about optimizing for contribution? Any things, lessons learned? Um, document your process. Um, so if you're going to bring in people and they're going to want to know how to cut a release, so document that. Um, have a change log. It's a pain. Everybody hates doing it. Um, just do it. It takes maybe 20 minutes every time you cut a release. Um, it's worth it. Have meetings. Like, if you really care, publicize those meetings or like do it on sort of Google Hangouts Live type situation. But be consistent and engage people in that way. Um, often that's difficult with distributed open source, right? If you have somebody in Europe or you have somebody in, uh, you know, China or India, like that's going to be really tough. But then maybe scale those back a little bit. But still, like. Try to actually build a, a community around it by engaging with people one-on-one -on -one instead of just talking on issues. Because issues are for one thing. They're for fixing things or for talking about um, new ways of doing things. But uh, have a chat room, those types of things have been super helpful. Sweet. Thanks. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we have one and a half minutes. Anybody else? Yeah? So yeah, like if you, now you can write a format, format can pick up with the environment variables, it can set silent to true and then those log messages just won't show up. Okay, but then I can light up only the ones that I want to. Right, exactly. Because, yeah, exactly. So it's like everything in that like object literal defines what the transports should do. Like is the message silenced, right? Which is that in your case, you're conditionally filtering things. Um, so. You know, I don't think anybody ever wrote Winston Dtrace. It might be there. Let's see. I've got a minute. Um, mirror. Conference Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm got booted. Yeah, I'm totally booted. Um, my guess is that it's probably there. But yeah, that was the thing that like, one of the other things about Bunyan, why I think it never really got as much um, adoption is because it uh, has just very set logging levels. You can't change it. And so, but they did have the D-Trace support, so that's sort of a one off. And I'm officially out of time. See the red light went off. <laughs> um, so if you want to talk about that more later.